What's going on everybody? Welcome back. We've gotten a whole bunch more work done in our retail store renovation. We got most of the coffered ceiling in, a bunch of our electrical ran, and the next step in our project is wrapping these old kind of ugly dimensional beams in some white oak. Come check it out. All right, so we have these dimensional beams that are the support for the third story of our building. And obviously they're six by sixes and this four by 10 up top that goes up into the floor joist, like I said, of the third story. And they don't look that nice, they're not that cool. And so what I wanna do is I wanna wrap these beams in white oak. It'll make them look more substantial. It'll also make them look really nice and pretty and visually attractive to the eye when you walk in the front door of the retail store. We do beam wraps for clients, both residential and commercial, all the time. If you have exposed dimensional beams in your living room or your kitchen, or you have a room that you wanna put faux beams in, you can make mitered long boxes out of different types of hardwoods and softwoods, whether it be, you know, fir or maple or like we're doing white oak, and you can really style up a room and change the visual appeal of it pretty easily, and you can do it on your own. Like I said, we do a bunch of them for clients all the time, uh, both wrapping beams and doing, you know, faux, faux beams in rooms. So I planed down all of this uh, four quarter white oak. We're just underneath an inch right now of thickness to get it all nice and clean. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first wrap the long beam and then we're gonna wrap the verticals to make them all the same dimension and make them look super nice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna miter with the track saw all the corners so that the pointed edges match up of the beam and it'll kind of look like it's one solid piece of white oak. So stay tuned as we work through this. You guys will catch on to this pretty easy. And like I said, it's definitely a project you could do on your own, in your own home to really elevate a space. We are gonna rip these miters with our Festool tracks off. We're doing that because we're upstairs in the space. Obviously our shop is right down below us right now. And we could rip all these on the table saw. I find that ripping these long pieces with the track saw keeps things really accurate and super square. If you don't have a track saw, I've said this a thousand times, you could totally use a two by four clamped to the piece and a circular saw using the two by four as a guide for yourself. Or you could do it in a table saw. You could come up with another way to do it. You could snap a string line, do it freehand, whatever. You can make this happen. So we're doing with this with the track saw. We're gonna first wrap our top beam and we wanna bring the beam uh, or rather our pieces a little bit deeper than the actual dimension of the beam. What this does is it allows for variance in the beam itself. As you can see between these two posts right here, this beam sags about a half inch and that's pretty standard. This building is almost a hundred years old. So you guys, they're settling all over the place and it's the Oregon coast, they're settling in every house. What that also does is it allows us to keep our box really square and the inside of the box away from binding or hitting the insides of the beams. And so we're gonna make the inside dimension, which right here, is six inches. We're gonna make the inside dimension six and a quarter inches, which is gonna basically give us a quarter inch of variance on the inside of the box. We're gonna rip this top edge flush and square so that it fits right up against the ceiling. And then we're gonna rip the miter uh, right after we do that. Alrighty, so over here on the end grain, I'm marking six and a quarter inches, which is what we said will be the interior depth of these uh, beam wraps here. I'm gonna then take my speed square and mark my 45 degree line so that I can get the measurement of where I'm gonna start my cut. The Festool track saw angles away from the track, 
which means your cut is cutting towards yourself. So the outside dimension, because of the thickness of the material, is gonna be deeper than obviously the interior dimension because we're putting a miter all the way down the whole piece. What I'm gonna do here is just take my measurement and it looks like our cut is gonna be basically just an inch longer than the interior piece, which is gonna end up right at seven and a quarter. So I'm gonna mark seven and a quarter to get my track lined up. Whenever I'm cutting these long miters, I always try to max out the angle of the track saw to get us just a little bit past 45 degrees. And what that does is it makes sure that the point of this joint is touching and not open. If we cut it shallow and less than 45 degrees, it has the opportunity to have that two points of the two pieces not match up. So I rather get those edges matched up so it looks all nice and clean then have the uh, the inside match up all righty so there is our first piece and these long pieces are always the most difficult to cut because even with our track extension doubled up I can't get all the way through it, so I can't really clamp the track very well, but slow and steady, and it makes it all the way down pretty cleanly. So what we're gonna do with this first piece is we're gonna get it mounted up from that wall to centered on this post. And that would be how it would naturally look if the whole beam was installed, if it were white oak, is to have that seam centered over one of the vertical supports. So we're gonna get this thing pinned in place. As you can see, I furred out this four x 10 so that it's flush with the outside of these six by six verticals. And that way all of our beams will end up being the same dimension. All right, so I just got this first piece centered in the opening. Because we could only get 12 foot lengths, I can't quite get all the way to my wall over here, but that's okay. We're gonna put a cool kind of white oak collar around it, which will tie everything together. I just pinned it right in the center. And as you can see, we have about this quarter inch depth change from the inside of the beam down to the inside of our wrap. And like I said, that's gonna give us just a really nice, clean, easy way to tie in the bottom piece all the way across. I'm gonna grab my level now that I have it pinned in the middle, make sure this thing is as close to level as possible and pin it in the rest of the way. And as you can see, we have a gap between the top of our wrap and the ceiling, but we're gonna continue this coffered ceiling on this side. So the gap is actually gonna be hidden here really soon when we wrap uh, the rest of the coffered ceiling. And so it's all gonna disappear when we get this thing in place. Sweet, we look really good right there. Now we're just gonna repeat the process on both sides and get this thing all pinned up here. The white oak is super heavy, so we're gonna put some screws in here up top, but the pin nails are just gonna hold us in place while we get all the rest of our pieces in. So really quickly, what I'm gonna do is just cause I don't have any extra hands, is I'm going to take just this block of wood and I'm gonna level it out and pin it to the underside of this beam here. And now it's level with the bottom point here. So when we sit this next piece on, theoretically it should sit 
nice and level to the other side of this thing. And then we'll level it over here. We'll get all of our stuff close by. So now I'm gonna do basically the same thing we had just done to secure our other pieces. I'm just gonna put a nailer right here, which will catch this piece coming in. And again, just keep it all at that exact same level. And it definitely helps to have two people on this. It's not the easiest thing to do alone. And again, over here on this side, we're gonna trim this thing into the window. So we're just gonna leave it just shy, just so we can make sure everything fits in properly. Now all we're gonna do is just cut our last long piece here. And then the short pieces are quite a bit easier. Alrighty, so we just have our first bottom piece cut. That's gonna be going between the wall and this post. And like I said earlier, we're gonna trim this whole thing out. So this gap is gonna go away. I just wanted to make sure we could get to the center of that post. When you're putting these joints together, you always wanna use glue. Anytime you're using those miter joints, you always wanna use glue in them. Whether you're trimming out a window, doing casework, whatever, put glue in it. We always use type one three in the shop. It's fully waterproof. So we use it on all of our furniture. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically get a quick line of glue up in the heel of the cut. And just kind of work that in across to make sure this thing won't come apart. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna get this thing up and into. So we have this thing pinned in place here. What I'm gonna do really quick is I'm actually gonna go run down to the shop and go grab one of our Bessie clamps to squeeze this thing together to make it as square as possible. So as you can see, this thing fit up really, really nicely. And sometimes with these wraps, especially when you have some varying thicknesses, they take a little bit of work, um, but the clamps help a lot to kind of suck everything together. And again, this is exactly why we glue everything because it's gonna hold it in place once we get it to the position that we really want it in. One thing that's kind of nice too, is we have this lip running all the way down here. We got glue all the way across and it just opens up just a hair over here. So what I do is I just lightly kind of take the framing hammer and just hit the box right on the corner. Again, we're gonna be sanding pretty much all of this stuff. And you just kind of knock that edge together. Uh, an old Finnish carpenter actually kind of showed me this trick when doing hardwood trim. And he referred to it as killing the edge, uh, but basically, you get that thing knocked up in there and then the fibers of the wood actually kind of fill the gaps. So right there, you can see how tight that's gotten. All of this is going to get sanded uh, and finished with, uh, of course, Odie's oil. But that gets us kind of close enough. We may use just some two-part epoxy filler on some of the corners that have opened up. Now we're just gonna work on our next stretch here, putting this piece in and we'll be ready for the beams. Alrighty, so we just wrapped the entirety of this upper beam and now we're gonna jump into wrapping our vertical posts.
So we got these two beams to wrap as well as just kind of this corner piece. And then we're gonna trim everything out. Um, as you can see, every once in a while, there's a few little gaps here and there on the edge. It's just really hard to wrap these things overhead. And so you'll see the way that I prefer to do these is make the box three-sided down on the workbench so that we're able to get it perfectly square. And then we'll slide it right in here and just put the back cap piece on in place. So. Once we get all of this stuff sanded and we put uh, you know, a, like a little bit of filler along the edge and cover the nail holes and sand this thing down, it's gonna be absolutely perfect. So we've got a couple clamps in places holding some stuff together. We're gonna get to cutting these verticals now. Alrighty, so we just got our last piece cut for this first post. Just gonna just check our measurement here. And we're at just over 85 inches. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this a half inch short on our total dimension. The reason why is I'm gonna actually put a trimmed collar down at the floor, uh, but I'm gonna leave it a little bit short. That way we can force this thing up into the beam to kind of suck it up tight to the, uh, the one that's up top. So first off, I'm actually just going to square off the edge here on both sides, and then we'll cut our finished dimension. All right, so we got all of our pieces cut up here for the box. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay this on a portion of sawhorse just inside the edge. We're gonna glue this seam here real quick. And we're just gonna get our next piece on here in place. We're gonna turn it. We're gonna do the exact same thing one more time. So we just have the three sides to this beam here. Again, the glue is super important for holding this stuff nice and tight together. Our next piece. Bring it in edge to edge. Now that we have these three pieces, ideally, we should be able to just slide this thing right in. All right, so we just slid this thing in place. As you can see, it fits up nice and snug to the post. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come into the back side here. I'm just gonna take my framing hammer down low. As you can see, I just left this little gap all the way around here. That way, again, I can force this thing kind of up into position, nice and tight. Make sure we're all pretty level. And that looks like a solid white oak beam now. So, all we have left in here is just this front piece. We'll get that thing on right now. If you notice, I only pinned the back side for right now. That way I can kind of move these two pieces a little bit if we need to. That corner came out just about as good as it gets. All right, you guys, that is pretty much it for getting these faux beams or beam wraps installed. The white oak looks so beautiful, especially with the really light walls and white we have in our space here. I got a bunch of sanding to do, filling nail holes with putty, trimming out kind of the collars, trimming out the base. But again, we're gonna be sanding all of this wood flooring. So I'm not gonna put any of the floor trim in until after we sand. We'll tie everything together. We'll finish the coffered ceiling. But as far as wrapping these beams, you guys, like I said earlier in the video, this is totally something that you could take on at home in a pretty cost-effective way to really elevate a space, whether it be your living room, dining room, bedroom, kitchen, whatever. These beam wraps or faux beams, which would be the same application or rather same process, um, 
are super fun to do and it absolutely changed the look of this from the old kind of ugly painted dimensional pieces of wood now to these beautiful pieces of white oak. We're gonna finish this with Odie's oil with the Arctic white pigment. That way it'll just kind of sit the white down into the wood grain, match everything else we have. But I think this turned out super nice. You guys, if you watch this, you found it helpful, it's really, really helpful for us if you hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions, please always reach out to us. Again, you guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.